It's one of those ideas that sounds awesome in a sci-fi movie. Resurrecting extinct species, the dodo bird, woolly mammoths, maybe even dinosaurs if you're a fan of theme parks gone horribly wrong. But with all the incredible advances in genetics and science, you might be asking, why haven't we brought back any extinct species yet? The short answer is, it's a lot harder than it looks. The long answer is a fascinating mix of science, ethics, and a good old-fashioned reality check. To even begin bringing a species back, you need two things, viable DNA and a surrogate mother. DNA is the genetic blueprint for life. The problem is, DNA breaks down over time, and it breaks down a lot faster than you'd think. Even in perfect conditions, DNA has a half-life of about 521 years. That means after just over 500 years, half the genetic bonds in the DNA are gone. After a million and a half years, there's nothing left. That's why the dodo, which went extinct in the 17th century, is a better candidate than a T-Rex, which disappeared 66 million years ago. Even if you have a perfect preserved woolly mammoth from the Siberian ice sheets, the DNA is still full of gaps and broken pieces. Think of it like a faded, torn-up old book. You can see some of the words, but you'd have to guess at the rest to figure out the whole story. Scientists are working on ways to fill in those gaps using DNA from living relatives, like elephants. But it's not an exact science, and the results would be more of a hybrid, a mammophant, than a true woolly mammoth. Once you have a functional blueprint, you need a living host to carry the new embryo. For a mammoth, you'd need an elephant. For a passenger pigeon, you'd need a common pigeon. This is where it gets incredibly complicated. In vitro fertilization is hard enough in closely related species, let alone trying to bring a hybrid embryo to term in a modern animal. The pregnancy could fail, the baby could be rejected, and the process would likely require countless failed attempts which raises huge ethical questions. And let's say you did succeed. You managed to create a healthy, bouncing baby mammoth. What happens next? Where does it live? You can't just release it into the wild. The woolly mammoth's ancient Arctic ecosystem no longer exists. The climate has changed, the vegetation is different, and there's no herd for it to join. The new mammoth would essentially be an orphan with no home. Bringing back a species isn't just about creating a clone, it's about rebuilding an entire complex ecosystem. It would take a massive effort and huge amounts of money to reintroduce a single species, let alone thousands of them. And what about the species that have taken their place? If we bring back the passenger pigeon, will we displace the birds that have moved into its old niche? And how would we even know which species to prioritize? The dodo? The saber-toothed cat? The Tasmanian tiger? It's easy to get lost in the science of it all, but the biggest hurdles are not technological. They're ethical and practical. Is it our right to bring back something we helped destroy? And what would it cost us, not just financially, but in terms of conservation for species that are still alive and on the brink of extinction right now? Maybe the real question isn't why don't we bring them back, but should we? If this got you thinking, hit that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into the questions that spark curiosity. There's a whole world of what ifs and why nots waiting to be explored. What topic should I tackle next? Drop your suggestions in the comments. I read every single one. Until next time, keep questioning everything.